distinguishing between solutions. Identification of true solution Take 10 grams fine powdered alum, sugar and common salt in 3 separate watch glasses. Preparation of a true solution of common salt in water. Put the fine powdered salt in a beaker containing distilled water and stir the solution using a glass rod till the salt dissolves. Preparation of a true solution of sugar in water. Put the fine powdered sugar in a beaker containing distilled water and stir the solution using a glass rod until the sugar dissolves. Preparation of a true solution of alum in water. Put the alum in a beaker containing distilled water and stir the solution using a glass rod until the alum dissolves. Now take three test tubes labelled A, B and C with a small strip of cellophane paper pasted on one side of each test tube and place them in the test tube rack. To test the stability of common salt, sugar and alum. To test tube A, pour a small quantity of common salt solution from the beaker. To test tube B, the sugar solution and to test tube C, the alum solution. Leave the three test tubes in the test tube rack for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, on looking at the solutions in all the three test tubes, you will notice that there are no sediments. This indicates that true solutions are stable and do not show deposits of components. Filtration of common salt, sugar and alum Take a funnel and place a filter paper in it. Then clamp the funnel to a stand. Place a test tube rack with a test tube in it at the base of the stand so that the lower end of the funnel is in the mouth of the test tube. Pour some salt solution from test tube A through the funnel. A clear filtrate is obtained with no residue left in the filter paper. Place another test tube in the rack and pour some sugar solution from test tube B through the funnel. A clear filtrate is obtained with no residue left on the filter paper. Now pour some alum solution from test tube C into another test tube through the funnel. A clear filtrate is obtained with no residue left on the filter paper. All these indicate that solid particles cannot be separated from a true solution by filtration. Identification of Colloids Take 1 gram starch powder and 1 gram egg albumin in two separate watch glasses. Preparation of a colloidal of starch in water Transfer the starch powder into a beaker containing about 3 ml water. Mix the solution using a glass rod. Heat another beaker containing distilled water over a Bunsen burner. Pour the boiling water into the beaker containing starch. Stir it well using a glass rod and then cool it. Transparency Pour a small quantity of the colloidal of starch in a test tube labelled G. Paste a small strip of cellophane paper on one side of the test tube and view it from the other side. The cellophane paper can be vaguely seen from the other side of the test tube. This indicates that a colloid is translucent. Filtration Clamp a funnel with a filter paper in it to a clamp stand. Pour the colloidal of starch from test tube G through the funnel into a test tube below the funnel. A translucent filtrate is obtained and there will be no residue left on the filter paper. This indicates that components causing colloid cannot be separated by filtration. Stability Take some colloidal solution of starch in a test tube and leave it in a test tube rack for 20 minutes. No change is observed. This indicates that colloids are stable. The solute particles do not settle down even after lapse of time. Preparation of a colloidal of egg albumin in water. 
transfer the egg albumin in a beaker containing about 5 ml distilled water. Mix the solution using a glass rod. Take distilled water in another beaker and pour it slowly into the beaker containing egg albumin and stir it well using a glass rod. A clear solution is obtained. Using a dropper, take a few drops of dilute HCl and add it to this clear solution and stir well. The clear solution of egg albumin and the water becomes turbid. Transparency Take some colloidal of egg albumin in the test tube labelled H with a small strip of cellophane paper pasted on one side of the test tube. Now view the test tube from the other side. The cellophane paper can be vaguely seen from the other side of the test tube. This indicates that a colloid is translucent. Filtration Clamp a funnel with a filter paper in it to a clamp stand. Then pour the colloidal of egg albumin taken in the test tube H through the funnel. A translucent filtrate is obtained with no residue left on the filter paper. This indicates that components causing colloid cannot be separated by filtration. Identification of Suspensions Preparation of a suspension of chalk in water Take 10 grams of fine chalk powder in a watch glass, transfer this into a beaker containing distilled water and stir the solution using a glass rod. Transparency Pour some of the chalk suspension in a test tube labelled E with a small strip of cellophane paper pasted on one side of the test tube. View the test tube from the other side. The cellophane paper is not visible from the other side of the test tube. This indicates that a suspension is opaque. Filtration Clamp a funnel with a filter paper in it to a clamp stand. Now pour the chalk suspension from the test tube E through the funnel into another test tube at the base of the funnel. A clear filtrate is obtained with chalk particles seen in the filter paper. This indicates that suspended components of a suspension can be separated by filtration. Stability Take some chalk suspension in test tube E and leave it in a test tube rack for 20 minutes. You will note a gradual settlement of soil particles at the bottom of the test tube. This indicates that a suspension is unstable and shows settlement of heavier particles. Preparation of a suspension of soil in water Take 10 grams of fine sand and soil in two watch glasses. Transfer the soil into a beaker containing distilled water and stir the solution using a glass rod. Transparency Pour some of the soil suspension in a test tube labelled F with a small strip of cellophane paper pasted on one side of the test tube. View the test tube from the other side. The cellophane paper is not visible from the other side of the test tube. This indicates that a suspension is opaque. Filtration Clamp a funnel with a filter paper in it to a clamp stand. Now pour the soil suspension from the test tube F through the funnel into another test tube at the base of the funnel. A clear filtrate is obtained and soil particles are seen on the filter paper. This indicates that suspended components of a suspension can be separated by filtration. Preparation of a suspension of fine sand in water Transfer the fine sand into a beaker containing distilled water and stir the solution using a glass rod. Transparency Pour some of the sand suspension in a test tube labelled D with a small strip of cellophane paper pasted on one side of the test tube. View the test tube from the other side. The cellophane paper is not visible from the other side of the test tube. This indicates that a suspension is opaque. Filtration 
clamp a funnel with a filter paper in it to a clamp stand. Then pour the sand suspension from the test tube D through the funnel into a test tube at the base of the funnel. A clear filtrate is obtained with sand particles seen on the filter paper. This indicates that suspended components of a suspension can be separated by filtration. Stability of sand and soil Pour some of the sand suspension into test tube D and soil suspension into test tube F. Leave these in the test tube rack for 20 minutes. Now observe the test tubes together. You will note a gradual settlement of soil particles at the bottom of both the test tubes. This indicates that a suspension is unstable and shows settlement of heavier particles.